to you um, what the young generation feels in Iran. Um, I heard the story of um, a young man um, who somewhere in the country uh, during the last year chose um, not to stay silent uh, in light of the acid attacks that were happening uh, to innocent women, uh, but who chose to protest against uh, that state violence uh, that um, happened uh, uh, towards Iranian women. And at the same time, he was um, finishing high school, and he entered uh, the exams uh, to um, then go on and study um, at a university, and he scored really uh, brilliantly in those uh, exams. The, the, the educational system in Iran is very much similar to the French uh, educational system. And so what the authorities did is um, they, it didn't really come to that they would expel him from the university, but they didn't even let him in in the first place. And um, the fate of this young man is that since then, since then he was denied access to an academic education, he is sitting at home and playing video games. And in the words of Federica Mogherini, um, 10 years from now, if political change doesn't arrive in Iran, this young, brilliant man will do exactly the same as he is doing right now. He will stay at home and play video games. He was deprived of his future. Um, he was deprived of individual happiness. And uh, I think um, we can all say that his future pretty much is, uh, is over simply because he chose not to stay silent in wake of those state violent uh, attacks that happened. And this is an example, and I chose this for a reason, because he was, he simply is an ordinary Iranian. He wasn't even a political dissident. He wasn't even a journalist or someone who um, protested politically against uh, the regime. He just uh, chose to raise his voice and to protect uh, the women of his city who were viciously um, attacked. And um, I want to remind all of us um, about that political movement uh, in 2009 that actually um, brought an alternative uh, to the current uh, regime uh, with which we have so many difficulties and so many problems. Uh, and I want to remind all of us um, who those young Iranians were that uh, we let down, that the European Union let down, that the Obama administration let down because um, they chose stability over um, freedom uh, for Iranians. And I brought a little video with me um, by an Iranian um, pop artist, um, uh, Siavash Komeishi, who lives in uh, exile since many years and who created pop music his entire life until uh, the protest movement, the democracy movement of 2009 emerged and he chose to actually create his first political pop song where he sang about a better future uh, for Iranians and where he laid out uh, what the strongest weapon of this democracy movement uh, really uh, was and, and continues to be their peacefulness, and um, let's have a look together.
I can imagine that uh, many of you, maybe even everyone, asks um, uh, or has the question, what, wh where are those revolutionaries who want uh, to peacefully transform uh, their country, who want to take their country uh, back? And uh, one of the answers to that uh, question is um, are actually a few numbers that I would like to share um, with you. It's the execution rate uh, in Iran. And um, uh, it's th these are really horrifying uh, numbers. In 2014, um, it was uh, 289 people who were executed in Iran. In 2015, it was at least 743 people, maybe even more than that. There are numbers who are up in the thousand. Um, and in 2016, uh, it was already 58 uh, people who were executed executed and this year just started. And I would like to confront you with some other numbers um, as well. The numbers of um, IRGC commanders who have died in combat uh, in Syria. Uh, in 2012, in January 2012, the number was 319. In 2015, September, it was 193. And in January 2016, it was 42. And these numbers of the IRGC commanders who have died in combat in Syria and the execution rate, the repression that is happening inside Iran, both of these aspects are directly related uh, to each other. Um, the regime uses the genocide that it has committed in Syria because it is a genocide. If you uh, kill uh, half a million people uh, in, in a country, it uses this genocide that it has committed to spread an atmosphere of fear, um, of um, violent repression, of the idea that they can hunt down every single person and uh, deprive them of everything they, they have um, uh, to stop and um, to prevent uh, Iranians from protesting again. Of course, they never succeed in that because Iranians are creative, they're innovative, uh, they are courageous, they find other means and ways to express their opinions, but it is that stability the European Union and the Obama administration chose in 2009 uh, only to gain uh, turmoil in the region uh, of the Middle East um, and uh, only to fool ourselves uh, to the idea that uh, the Iranian regime uh, could be a partner in uh, facing all of these challenges that uh, are ahead of us in the Middle Eastern region. Now, coming back to um, Federica Mogherini's statement at the Munich Security Conference, she said that this is a deal we have. This doesn't mean we're friends. It's actually worse than that. It's actually worse than being friends with the Iranian regime because we have partnered with the Iranian regime to fool ourselves into the idea that we could use their help and that we need their help in uh, uh, dealing and solving all of these uh, conflicts. And um, I'm not a person of black and white uh, thinking, but this is something that I would like to close with. Um, the Islamic Republic and the Islamic State, to me, don't really look so different because the Islamic State beheads people in broad daylight and the Islamic Republic hangs people from cranes in broad daylight. Both are the same human rights violations I, I see and uh, we, uh, we are putting ourselves into danger. We are putting our security and the, the future of our democracies into danger if we really think that the Iranian regime is, uh, uh, is a player in the region that we could, uh, we could team up with uh, to, uh, to solve all of these conflicts at the expense of the future of the Iranian people. And this is something that I will never keep silent about. Thank you.
state in the Mediterranean because of what Iran, I must say, I have been the analyst who was a documentary analyst for me and uh, he lived for six years in Syria and is now busy with investigating the connection between IS and uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now we go to uh, Mrs. Mr. Mohammed Teresa Yazdan Fana from Radio of New York in Prague. You have the floor. Thank you, thank you everyone for having me. <clears throat> I first apologize about my voice. And I'm, now I'm really touched after these two really strong remarks by Rachel and Saba. And watching this uh, emotional video clip because I was a part of that fabulous movement in Iran, small part, and so it's really hard to speak now, but uh, at the first, before I start my brief talk, I would like to mention <coughs> a memory about uh, about one of the small part of Baha'i society in Iran, uh, which I think they are the meaning of the discrimination in Iran, real mean of discrimination in Iran. Uh, I was born in north of Iran, uh, in a province just next to the Caspian Sea. And this province is historically a part of, uh, with a lot of Baha'is uh, faith supporter uh, in north of Iran. And uh, we had a family, Baha'i family. They were our neighbors when I was born. and. Uh, in, in this family, there so there were two, there were parents, and also two girls, and the mother of this family, uh, almost at uh, when I was born, gave a birth to another girl. So we were neighbors. It was a small town. She uh, she feed me with her milk for a few years. Uh, so I grew up, I was, I think I was 14. Uh, we, we were really friends in, uh, I, I think the families were really close, uh, really friends. And uh, one day the, the lady uh, just, so she was like my mother. She was really like my mother. Uh, she, we met each other in front of our, our house. And uh, uh, so, like always, she hugged me and we kissed each other. And uh, suddenly, a militia patrol called Basij in Iran was passing from uh, next to us and they, they arrested both of us. Uh, so, I. <laughs> uh, you know, in, even in Islamic law, uh, in Shia law, uh, if you you are, you are being feeding by a by a woman for for uh, more than three years, I think uh, you you are.